So to start this look off, I'm going to be using the Cargo HD Picture Perfect Eyeshadow Primer. I really do like this stuff for days where I don't need uh, my eyeshadow to last forever because I don't find this to be as long lasting as like the NARS one or even the Lorac one. But I really like the texture it gives my eyelid. It's a much thicker consistency than most eyelid primers. So I really find that it just evens out the actual texture of the eyelid and uh, provides a really nice base for blending. And I can get about like, you know, six to eight hours of wear out of it. So it's not too bad. And as you can see here, I have done one eye just for convenience. Uh, it's not all the way down. I still have to add stuff to the lower lash line and everything like typical of my tutorials. But it's almost there. <laughs> then I'm going to just give a quick curl to my eyelashes. I'm then going to be taking just a flat eyeshadow brush and any sort of a cream eyeshadow. This is just my typical prepping routine. I probably could have kept this out, but I will show you guys it just for the sake of the video. Uh, this is the Vintage Vixen palette from Lara. It came out holiday last year. I just usually like to take something like this and just kind of, something that's close to my skin tone, just kind of smooth it around the crease area so that my blending is a little bit easier and then I'll go in with a highlight shade because I almost for, always forget to do this. This is the Physicians Formula Canyon Classics Quad. Kind of run that up there. Really simple. So for the majority of this look, I'm going to be using my new Inglot shadows that I picked up. I told you guys in my last August purchases and reviews video that um, I didn't really do this intentionally, but I created a very cool tone, very fall appropriate palette. So I thought that for this more fall inspired look that I would break these out since I haven't actually used a lot of these. I'm going to start here with this kind of... Um, rosy mid-tone blending shade. I now realize I have like a million different colors like this so I don't know why I picked this up but regardless I still really like it. This is number 344. Sweep a bit of this onto a really nice big fluffy brush. Actually I haven't used this one. This is my good old trusty Sonia Kashuk one. I haven't used this guy in forever. I've been so obsessed with my It Cosmetics blending brush but I think today I'm just gonna do this. Just kind of you know sweep this all over from inner corner to outer corner. Very sloppily just trying to get a little bit of a base going. This eye look is actually insanely simple, which is why I really like it. Then I'm going to go into this really deep burgundy shade here, which let me pull it out so I can tell you guys what color this is. Okay, uh, this is number 450, 450. Very nice eye, deep, deep, deep cranberry kind of color. Very rich and very red in tone. So taking this on the e.l.f. crease brush, and I'm trying to tap off as much of it as I can. Just picking up the tiniest amount on the brush, I'm going to take this kind of a little bit more centralized in my crease area. I'm not trying to bring it uh, up as much as I did with the last color. Just kind of using this to add in a little bit of warmth. See, it kind of adds a nice burgundy tone, which when you go in and you blend everything on top of, you can't see too much, but still looks nice. And then using the e.l.f. blending brush, I am going to do just that, just kind of blend over the colors. Next, I'm going to go back into the Vintage Vixen palette. I know that this is limited edition, but the color I'm using is really simple. It's this shade right here. It's a very true, neutral toned light brown. It's not warm. It's not cool. Very neutral in tone, and this is what I'm placing all over the lid. So as you can see, it's not very dark either. It's just a nice kind of tan color. Kind of like a latte shade almost. Just very, very light in tone. You could also use like a slightly darker face powder for this if you have one that's not, you know, like too orangey or too warm tone. Just something to add a little bit of depth to the lid because I do like to have some color there, but not enough to really deepen the look or lighten the look. And then, oh, these colors are so difficult. <laughs> I'm going to be going into this uh, really nice, rich, eggplanty gray shade. This is number 326. And even the backs of these are really reflective. These were like not made to be shown on camera, I feel like. And using my good old trusty crease pencil brush, which I use all the time, I'm going to start to work this on the very outer corner, starting kind of over here, flicking it inward and then dragging it through the crease. And then back into the blending brush, just kind of using this to smooth over everything, kind of 
pull it out a little bit to give my eye a little bit more of an elongated shape. And if you're wondering why I have like little, I don't know if it's going to show on camera, I have little tiny red blotches all over my eyebrows because as usual I just had to pluck my eyebrows before filming a tutorial. I am like really needing to change up that routine because it always looks awful <laughs> when I go to do my makeup. I think that's about, yeah that's good. I'm not going to mess with it anymore. So then we're going to go in and just do a winged eyeliner. I try to make it a little bit thicker than maybe I normally would. It's still not anything too thick. You could go thicker, you could go thinner, whichever you prefer. Um, I am going to be using the Inglot AMC Eyeliner Gel in number 77. So kind of keeping the Inglot thing going strong. <laughs> And uh, as always, part of this may be cut off camera because I'm not very good about doing this on camera, but apply your eyeliner however you'd like to apply it. I think a kind of thicker wing really complements the look and um, it's a little something more dramatic that I think you can get away with in the fall and the winter. All right, and then once we have that done, uh, typically if I, this is kind of one of the days where I've actually worn makeup continuously for the past couple of days before. I don't have to do this, but it is the weekend. I haven't worn uh, makeup for a couple of days. And so uh, right here at my lash line, there's still a lot of skin showing. And so I like to just take a little bit of a black eyeshadow on a push liner brush and just stamp it right in there and just really get in there in the roots of the lashes and really make sure that you know my entire lash line is black it just looks a lot cleaner a lot crisper and it looks a lot more professional if you do this step and then taking whatever the blackest liner you have is this is the l'oreal carbon black extra intense liner to me this is the blackest eyeliner in the entire world run this on your tight line and then we're going to go in with a mascara. Recently, I've been using the uh, Super Sizer Mascara from CoverGirl. I really, really enjoy this, except for the fact that every single time I've used it, and I've only had it open for a couple of days, so I'm sure that this problem will change, I have to wipe it off because there's so much mascara that goops around the actual wand here. I really wish that the stopper worked a bit better because this is a mascara that really works best when you just have a small amount on the actual wand. So... But regardless, it's totally worth it because this mascara is the bomb. And once I feel like I have the wand all nicely cleaned off, just go in here and apply a coat of this. You can obviously use whichever mascara you like. This one I just have really been enjoying recently. This mascara, I love it because the wand is so small and precise. You can really get in there at the roots of your lashes. And it's so nice because I don't get it all over my eyes. The actual shape and size of the wand allows me to, you know, when I have kind of lighter lid looks going on like this, to really get in there but not make a complete mess. And I just really like the way that this makes my lashes look. Um, I'm not saying I have fantastic lashes to start out with, but I really feel like it builds a lot of thickness and it gives me, at the same time, a good amount of definition. And it's one of those mascaras where I can wear this and not be like oh my gosh this look would look so much better if I had false eyelashes on I feel like this is enough like for me to kind of go without them which I really like so now that I've gotten the main kind of part of the eye look, I am going to be doing something different on the lower lash line. I'm just going to go and apply my foundation, do those kind of steps that I normally do, and then I will come back with you guys, tell you guys what I use, and we'll finish up the whole look. All right, guys, so this eye is now officially completed, so let's finish up over on this one. I'm going to go back into that kind of mid-tone blending shade that we used at the very beginning. Uh, again, using this on my pencil brush, I'm just picking up a tiny bit of this color just to lay down a little bit of a base. Then taking the push liner brush that we used earlier, and again, oh god, well, how did this happen? Ah! So taking a little bit of black uh, eyeshadow, I'm just going to stamp this right up here next to the lashes. For the same reason we did it earlier, just to kind of cover up some of that fleshy white tone space that I don't really like too much. And it doesn't have to be perfect, just a little bit of something to kind of help the blending process. And then I'm going to be taking the last Inglot eyeshadow that we will be using, and this is a new one. I didn't use it on my upper lid. This is number 423. This is a very pretty purpley kind of shade with a golden red kind of reflect to it. It's really, really gorgeous. It's not overly shimmery, but it does have a little bit of a shimmery sheen to it. Um, but it's still, you know, it's not anything metallic enough for me to not use it down here. So, taking this on a smaller brush, I'm just going to start to apply this right underneath here. And then going back into the pencil brush, I'm just going to kind of buff along the edges for a soft blend. And now we're going to go back into the black eyeliner that we used earlier. Just apply a little bit of that onto our waterline. God, I got just makeup like all over my hands right now. I don't know why this turned out so messy. Then using CoverGirl Clump Crusher on my lower lashes, I'm just going to apply a coat of this. 
And that is it for the eyes. I still do have to do my eyebrows real quick, and then uh, I will come back and show you guys what I am using on my lips. All right, guys, so let's move on to the lips. I'm going to start by using the L'Oreal Infallible Lip Liner in the shade Plum. And I just line my lips with this, as I normally would. Turn on my lamp here. It's getting dark. And I actually want to tell you guys, I did order tons of new lip products from ColourPop. Um, I'm going to try out a couple of different things from them, and I tried to get a lot of fall shades, which I was hoping to have by this tutorial, but I don't have them, so I'm going to be using just a good old standby. This is the uh, Maybelline Plum Perfect Color Sensational Lipstick. I like this because it's plummy, it's dark, but it's not too dark. It definitely comes off lighter on the lips than it looks in the tube. And it has the perfect amount of red to it, where I feel like with a lot of berries, shades and this is the problem I've always had with berries and I know that this kind of color is starting to trend a little bit more but um I don't like how pink those shades wear off and I don't like just how how pinky and how fuchsia-y they can kind of look on the lips and I'm so happy that more of the brown based colors are starting to come in because I like the way they wear better and I just think that they uh, I don't know I feel like on my particular skin tone and hair color and everything they just look a lot better so I'm going to be taking this on a lip brush and just wiping this on. And then just to help myself map this down a little bit, I'm just going to do the whole like tissue and then uh, loose powder trick. Just I kind of want this to be matte, obviously. It's a fall look. All right, and then that is the final lip. So just quickly, let's go through and let me tell you guys what I used um, on the rest of my face. So I started by applying just a little bit of the Garnier BB Cream in the combination to oily skin formulation. Um, I realized that I need to pick up some more need to pick up some more foundations. Uh, I've collected so many over the summer that are kind of dark that I might need to get a couple that are kind of good for me as I'm transitioning in between. I've also really been appreciating lower coverage foundations recently, which is so dramatically different from the, the beginning of this year when I was struggling so bad with my acne. But now that that's starting to go away and even my scarring is starting to fade dramatically, um, I'm liking the lighter coverage. I like my skin to show through because I feel like it's good now and I want to kind of show that off a little bit. So, uh, but anyway, off of that tangent, <laughs> Let's move on to the next thing. I didn't do any bronzing to the skin, but I did do some contouring. Uh, typically in the fall, I don't try to go too heavy with the bronzer. I mean, obviously, your summer tan is going to start to wear off, and I kind of feel like it's a good time to embrace paleness, and that's awesome for me because I'm not naturally tan at all. And so I just used uh, this kind of middle shade here, a good taupey color, just to kind of give some definition to my cheekbones. And then for blush, I used the Makeup Forever HD Blush. This is in the shade number 220. This is a great no blush kind of blush because, and it probably won't even pick up too much on camera, it's very, very, very subtle. You can kind of see it a little bit back here, just a very, very slight hint of pink. But when you're wearing such a bold lip, I really like that to be the focal point. That and the eyes just kind of, you know, kind of contrast it, make it all even. But if you have too many things going on and you wear too bright of a blush, it can look very glamorous, but it can also take away from whatever you're wanting to stand out. So I love this. I think I'm going to really like this in the fall just because as I start to wear these bolder colors more. I like blushes like this a lot. And then to kind of highlight the face, um, I'm not using any of kind of like my more shimmery highlighters. Again, as we get into more of the fall, I think that, you know, of course, having the matte skin is always much more trendy. And so uh, to kind of highlight though and kind of bring out some focal features, I just used a good old concealer for to kind of, you know, help brighten a bit. But rather than creating a shimmery highlight, just create lightness and then darkness. So uh, Smashbox High Definition Concealer in the shade Light. Uh, this just went under my eyes and then I used the Yves Saint Laurent Touche Eclat for uh, kind of some more brightness. So this is in the shade number two. It's a very nice pale color. Down the bridge of the nose, in the center of the forehead, on the chin, a little bit kind of in that triangle motion under the uh, under the eyes and a little bit on the cheeks just to kind of bring out some of those features without using shimmer. And then that was it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this look. Let me know if you are going to try out something similar to this or uh, what you think. And I will talk to you guys all next time. Bye-bye.